folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we got some cool coverage for you. It's the 2022 Charlie Vetner Open. This is our feature card for round number one. We're out in Louisville, Kentucky, as we're getting our players in a little bit early before Idlewild, and we had this uh, great event going on, so we figured we'd show it to you. Special shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who helped make this possible. I'm Dustin Murray, and joining me for commentary is one of our competitors, Nick Hansen. How's it going, sir? Hey, how we doing today? Doing pretty good, dude. Looking forward to uh, seeing how these players uh, attack this course, as we definitely have some familiar faces that are going to be in our feature card for the start of round one here for CBO. Uh, and so just looking forward to how they activate this course. As uh, you can see, Matt Oram, kind of probably the biggest name on the list as far as rating goes, but a couple of other familiar faces from the Disc Golf Pro Tour and some locals sprinkled in there as well. Let's take a look at Stotts Oatley's bag. Um, Scott's me rocking the Berg, um, the Marvel by Birdie, and then the Stall is all, well, as always we're going to see from him. Yeah, I know he throwing an open bag, but definitely likes to throw a good bit of Trilogy and cast a plas, and then, of course, that Marvel's new for him. Tim ba Barham, of course, coming from Discraft, uh, puts the Challengers, and, and known for many of the typical Discraft molds. Uh, I know the Buzz SS has been kind of like a tour series for him in the past, so maybe we'll see some of that. But then other than that, kind of your typical Raptor, Vulture, Undertaker, things of that nature. Yeah, and my bag here is going to be the DT Glow Mega 4s. Um... Quantum Omega 4, um, the new Solstice by them, the Falcon, and the Scorpion. And then, of course, Matty O playing for a west side disc. Putts, the judge, has been for quite some time. Uh, we'll use the anvil for some approaches. Also likes to throw the harps on backhands. And then has, uh, you know, a good love for things like the Ati and the Felon uh, for some of the fairway drivers, as well as his flow is something he likes to throw quite a lot as we get to hole number one. So hole number one is going to be a pretty short uh, 181. It's going to be downhill the entire way. But really, players are just going to be throwing a shot shape from left to right I'm gonna, I guess to try and go. settle close to the basket there. Yeah, it looks like Scott Stokely is going to be stepping up here first, looking to just throw a little bit of a forehand here, probably with the Berg. No, he likes to use that for approaches quite a lot. Obviously a veteran of disc golf, and he made a big comeback this year in the sense of getting back on the Pro Tour, you know, after just kind of focusing more on I guess like MP50 and, you know, traveling around the world and teaching and stuff like that. So cool to see him here. Now we got Tim Barham taking the box. Seen him on tour a little bit this year, but mostly plays kind of in his local scene and obviously a great player. Great backhand turn over there. Yeah, he's going to turn it over there, but it's going to funnel right down to the basket there nicely. And here you are, sir. Going with the... Um... A P2 here, turnover shot. And he's just going to stay on that left side and be a little hung up early. Yeah, now Matty O takes the box as he has been a force to be reckoned with this year at this new sponsor. Uh, you know, I don't think he's placed outside of the top 15 on tour this year. And he's gotten to finish an event, but he has many top five finishes, including a fifth at our first major at Champions Cup. So, really solid player, ranked seventh in the world right now on UDIS. So, expect him to do well here as that's a great shot. Yeah, this course today will suit him well. Here I am putting from circle two. Oh, nice bid. Good bid. Just wanted to stay close, though. Man, Stokely didn't really have a whole lot to work with, but punches out to save par, so pretty well done considering his tee shot. So we have Matteo here for birdie, very close to the pin. And as you said, he's very used to holes like this coming from old Chickasabogue out in the Mobile, Alabama area, which is... Uh, where I'm from as well, actually. So he's one of the first pros I ever met was Matt, actually. So he'll sink that one, no problem. I see you probably played his home course then. Oh, I've played them all, man. Like the Mobile, Alabama area. I think Matt's actually from Creola, uh, which is kind of just north of Mobile. But we have so many courses over here. Um, definitely a great place for disc golf. A lot of people, of course, know Mattio, but Cameron Colglaze is another big name that came out of this area as well. So we'll see Tim Bottom drop in the birdie. See, this is a hole you really want to start and get your birdie on for the round. Just in case I eat. Um, but as you see here, uh, Scott and I are tapping in for our threes. And two twos and uh, two threes here on the first hole of competition here today. And now we're on to hole number two. Hole number two is going to be an uphill 284 foot par three. 
Um, once you get up here, there's gonna be an OB along the right-hand side that wraps up and behind the basket and then comes back down on that left-hand side you see there. I would say the shot is really gonna be something that flips up through the gap and then kind of just rides straight. Looks like that's exactly what Tim's looking to do here. Looks like it's fading out a little bit on him, but it does stay in the circle. Matt right down the pipe here with this one. Maybe a little short. Yeah, he'll still be in circle two though, but probably shorter than he wanted. And I know that the forehand is certainly Scott Stokely's more comfortable shot. I mean, used to be a distance record holder with the forehand and even the backhand at a time as well. So, lowest those touch forehands, but that one may have come up a little bit shorter than he wanted. Yeah, so I don't think he was actually playing. I think he was just playing for that shot right there, the way he threw it. So, he's kind of just playing for the three on this one, it seemed like. I'm going to be enough. throwing a fairway driver that I'm going to just try and flip up the gap, like I was saying, and get up there inside the circle. Let's get out of your hand. Making the catch cam turn around. That looks like that came up a little deep. A little deep, close to that OB, so we were definitely flirting with it back there. Well, luckily you didn't take it all the way out to a date, so you'll still have a chance there as we get up to Scott Stokely. Very lengthy bit here ahead of him, just trying to float it up there, give himself a close par putt, and he's done just that. This is definitely a range that Matty O can still be pretty dangerous from. That spin put of his. And there it is. Oh. I imagine there's probably some roll tides, some Sabin references, and who knows what else when Matty O's on the course. That's a great way to keep things rolling here early on. What a putt from him. Little spinner to get you started. Now we're up to Tim, looking for his birdie. Try to go back to back like Matt. That'll do. You got a birdie put yourself here, don't you, Nick? I do. I'm on the back side here, like we said. I'm going to be just inside the circle, probably about 25 to 28 feet here. A little downhill putt. Oh, man. The birdies are out flying here on hole number two. The birdies are going to be needed out here, but <laughs> um, you also can bogey some of these holes you'll see here shortly. Uh-oh. Well, a little foreshadowing, perhaps. <laughs> Scott will take can, the par. Of course, can eat you up. And it does look pretty tight out there as we get to hole number three. Is Yeah, this one definitely looks a little scary. So, hole number three, 479-foot uh, par four. Most players are going to try and land just past this tree here, and then they're going to have an easy approach um, to get their uh, 33. However, some players will try and punch through and try and get all the way up here for the eagle bid. Yeah, definitely that kind of distance or eagle is certainly an option, but very tricky corridor to navigate to get up there. As 10 does slip through. Gonna be off to the left, but yeah, he slips through there, gets up the fairway enough, I think. Again, this is the type of course that I know Matt's gonna feel very comfortable on, just from knowing his background. Loves this woodsy golf. And that's a beautiful line. He's right where you wanna be. Indeed, prime real estate for Matty O there. Kicking this round off, here you go. Yeah, so I got opted for the mid-range off the tee here, really not trying to get too far up the fairway, but just getting in a good position. Well, sir, I would have to say, it looked like you accomplished your goal. Yeah, if you're up by the cameraman, you're usually in a good spot. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. Uncanny how that cameraman happens to be in an ideal landing zone. So we are going to see Scott looking for an understable kind of forehand option here, but catches a tree, but I'm not sure. Maybe he still has some positioning. Yeah. 
And yeah, I'm not sure. What, does, does that does that look pretty good to you for Tim? From knowing the course? It was hard to, it's hard to remember, but I think he's up there inside circle two, if I remember right. Kind of like skidded out early. Yeah. And Scott puts himself in position for the birdie putt there. Matt has a pretty easy little just touch backhand to get up to the green for his birdie. He's just so good at these shots right here. Absolutely. And here you are, sir. Chance for you to get up and down for your birdie here on the edge of the fairway. Just a little pitch sidearm here. Trying to get a little bit of a roll there, but still inside the circle, so happy with that. Yeah, no no danger on that roll, as Tim definitely has a lengthy putt ahead of him for birdie after getting off the fairway off the tee. Gives it a chance, but nestles up at least to make sure he takes the par. And here's the birdie for Scott. Finally bagging him on here on the front nine. As what was your experience with the course coming into it? I think I know that you put out a practice round video not too long ago here at Gatekeeper, and it seemed like you know you were kind of playing it for one of your first times. Yeah, so during the round, I felt like at the very beginning, it was going to be a, like a birdie or die course. Um, but I would say as you get through this course here, it gets a little harder as you go along every, you know, bit of the way. You'll see we'll get towards some island holes and we'll get to some longer holes on the back nine. So it's really a well-developed course in terms of like, you know, making you think entire round. And it's not something you can just coast on, I would say, once you get a bunch of birdies on the front nine. Fair enough. As I believe, what, the first two rounds were on this course and the final round was on a different course? Is that right? That is correct. Uh, two rounds on Saturday here and then one round at um, Ryan's course. After that short break, we're back to it here. Another par three on hole number four. Uh, par three, uh, number four is 274 feet. It's uphill. Um, as soon as you get to here, you're going to need to go right. I would say most right-hand players are going to be throwing a uh, sidearm that then kind of pushes right, hopefully. Um, we did see some backhands, though, as well. And the uphill nature probably makes the play a little bit longer than the distance would indicate, and obviously a very tight tunnel. As Matt doesn't quite get maybe as many skips as he was hoping for there. So he's going to have a lengthy bid for birdie. Myself here, throwing the fairway. Just trying to get up there and around that corner just like he did so that way you at least have a look. Mm. Looks pretty good out the hand. Maybe pushes a little too straight. Yep, pushes a little straight. We did get into those trees, but you want to be shorter than that and fading out sooner. That's certainly what Tim's looking for here. Has it hyzered the whole way pretty much, so seems to be good, but kind of gets caught up short. Yeah, he's going to clip that stuff on the right and drop down, so he should be able to get up and down pretty easily here. Tim just kind of pitching up, kind of out of position to really run anything there. And now we get up to Scott Stokely, who has a lengthy bit ahead of him here for birdie. Hangs it just a little bit wide, so we'll have to settle for par. That's a fluffy putt. Yeah, but this is that area. If you get here, you give yourself a chance, and that's all you're really looking for at this level is make sure you got a chance. A little jumper here for Matty O. Looks like he was a little high there. Almost. A little high, but good run. Here so, I am in the woods, probably about like 35 feet, I think. A little National Geographic action for you here from Nick Hansen. <laughs> oh, but the chains will still be found. Well done, sir. Polecat action never hurt. Is that what that was? Yeah, that's a halo polecat there. Oh, my. Stocks are just continuing to go up on that thing. Oh, and look at that little spinner into the basket. That was nice. It was indeed, sir. I can confirm. So you'll walk that one in. It's three in a row. A little turkey. A little gobbler out there. Yep. That's what we need. It's a good start to the day. 
Absolutely. So Matt will tap in the par after his turkey on holes one through three. That streak will come to an end now, but so there's still plenty of more for him out there on the course. As Scott will tap in his par, and Tim will follow suit. We start kind of hitting our midway point of the front nine here for our opening round. And they'll take us to hole number five, another par three. So here we have a Mando on that right-hand side there that you have to go left. But once you get past these trees, it's going to be downhill to the basket. So if you get going too fast, you can easily get away from it and get down until there's a little creek down there. Um, it only had water in it about half the time this week, I would say. So it is casual. Cool deal. So you got the box now. Are we throwing a mid range here? I'm trying to give it to go flat and then fade at the end. Hmm. Last tree you really had to miss there and kick you a little short. We're gonna get kicked into the woods there and spring wood from inside there. Looks like Matt's clubbing up to I believe this is one of his more overstable mids. Maybe he's gonna force it over a little bit and have it trickle in from what I can tell. Oh, catches the same tree, I believe. It's a good placement there for the right hand back. Here's Scott. Let's see what he's thinking. Something a little faster in his hand here. Looks like he wants to go for the forehand. A little bit unconventional. But again, I know that's kind of his comfort shot. If you can work it like that, I guess, might as well. A little hyzer flip up. Yeah, as you can see, it slid all the way back there, though, unfortunately. So hopefully he still got his look nice, too, I would say. I think it's right near the edge of circle one, but like you said, could be in some uh, some shrubbery trying to get that putt going. Should get the Tim. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, I think we'll call that one good. There it, there it is. And let's see his form here. <clears throat> so Tim, great at throwing the mid. You can see him coming across the chest here, nice and smooth, flat. Good release, follows all the way through. As you tell, can tell, right next to the back of down there. Yeah, just pretty much as textbook as it gets. Definitely a form to emulate and learn from. So we get up to your approach here, and once again, you find yourself in some uh, some bushes. I think we can barely see my red shirt in there. Yeah, that's the only way that I knew it was you, actually. It was just the, the red. What are you thinking here? Or, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to hit and kick left further into the woods. Sick. And so we're going to be on our second pitch out here now. Here, I'm going to throw a roller out and... Hey! We got out. <laughs> you made. I mean, I'm just sitting here waiting for something to come out. The, the push is all I could really do as a spectator. And, hey, it, it did work. And looks like Scott, you know, despite pushing a little deep, still has a look here for birdie. Definitely, you know, it's a tricky one, though. Kind of had to float it over some branches. So not the easiest look by any means. Yeah, he's sad about that one, and I would be too. It's a great shot to get him down there, but then to have that in your way is no fun. I mean, he had a very tricky route to use a forehand to take, but made it look really pretty and then just came up a little deep, a little bit obstructed, and so I have to set up for par. Here you are, I guess, for bogey, because you said you got caught up on your first attempt out. Yep, we're putting for bogey here. Well, at least limiting the damage, and, you know, you had that turkey earlier, so still very much in the mix. Yeah. Now I get up to Tim, who had the best tee shot of the group here. Very short putt ahead of him for birdie. This is a really good birdie to get, I would say. Indeed, as Matt will clean up the par and Scott will do the same here. So we get ready to head over to hole number six here for our opening round. A little bit of a longer par three. A little more open, though. Yeah. Yep. So, going to be our first open hole, I would say. 324 feet. Right-handed players are really just going to throw a hyzer that then fades out at the end to be up there inside the circle. 
Yeah, a little bit of a gap here to hit off the tee, but definitely a lot less claustrophobic than what y'all been dealing with through the, many of the opening holes. And Tim takes full advantage with that one. Yeah, as long as you miss that bush on the right, and you have it going fast enough and it's on hyzer, you're going to be up there. Yeah, full distance driver here for Matteo. Looking to play up high, perhaps, with something like that. Nope, low line. But great result. I feel like with the control he has, he's able to club up easier than most players. And just like that, he's throwing up, you know, a driver, a little slower speed with it and getting it right close. Yeah, it looked like that was just like a very down-tempo shot for him. He's definitely very capable of throwing that distance driver well over 500 feet. But either way, it looks like Scott's going to get caught up there, kind of on that right-hand side. Yeah, those are the... You know, you just want to come right. You want to push those as much as you can. And as you can see, he barely got into them and got hung up. I'm going to be going with the uh, overstable fairway here. Throwing a similar shot to the rest of the group. It looks good out your hand. Mm, it's caught up kind of in that same cluster of trees there, but we'll see what you got. Barely in there, but maybe it's there. Long attempt here for Scott. Not quite going to get it done. Looks like you have a little window here. Inside the circle, and yep, just like you said, a little window there to hopefully get a spinner out. Mm, just a little low, but not a bad attempt considering where you're at. Tim and Matt have kind of short work to do here to get their birdies, and yourself and Scott should be able to take the par, no problem. As not many people may know this, but I know that you actually do some work with Gatekeeper on the Pro Tour, helping with filming and things of that nature, so uh, it's kind of cool to get to see you compete now as well here on Gatekeeper coverage. Yeah, it's fun. Um, it's a good middle ground to touring, whereas I'm working and playing, so it's been a fun uh, experience so far, and excited to keep going with them. So what's kind of the main thing you've been doing with Gatekeeper this year on the film crew? Um, so I do, like, um, just some assistance during the rounds, getting some speeds off the tee, doing some, like, filming and stuff like that. Um, just kind of anything they need during uh, game day, what I would say. Sweet. Hi guys, Ricky Wysocki here. We are starting the Saki Bomb Foundation. The main goal for me is to really give back to the sport, start kids from a young age, and expose them to the great sport of disc golf that we all love. We got a website going, SakiBombFoundation.org. There's lots of different things you can do on the website. I've heard uh, the older generation of disc golfers saying, I wish I would have started disc golf when I was younger, and now I'm able to start these kids off at a young age through my foundation. It really means a lot to me, and it means a lot for the sport to donate and go to the website, SakiBombFoundation.org. All right, and let's start working towards the end of this front nine here as we're on another pretty open hole for hole number seven. So hole number seven, 269 feet. It actually is an island hole, though. Oh, okay. Um, it's a little bigger than the circle on the top side, but pretty small. Certainly will give it an added challenge with it being certainly more open. Don't think Tim has any trouble hitting the island with that shot, though. That is going to be great. So as far as I'm aware, these are new to this year. Um, we'll see a couple of them in the next couple holes. And that is absolutely part for Matty O. We'll be able to drop that one in for So Bernie. easy. Yeah. A little wide from Scott. Let's see if it can get the ground action he needs. Not quite sure where he's wound up. Yeah, I think he's safe on the top side. I'm going to be throwing a sidearm as well. Just too flat out of the hand. You can tell right away that it's probably going to be deep, and there I am, flying the green. Hmm. So this will bring it to the drop zone, try to save par from a good distance away. Giving it a bid, but just too high. Didn't really commit to the putt, even though I was going for it. 
Oh. Nice bid there from Scott. He'll hit the top ban. Nearly found it. There I am, saving bogey. I feel like this, two, this hole is usually a two or a four. Um, I can see why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, usually if you're on the island, you're probably in circle one for a birdie putt. And, well, if you're not, that's a very tough putt to try to save par from at that drop zone. Yeah, it's downhill, so it runs away. And you know, the OB is pretty close behind the basket there. Yep, as Tim will hit another turkey here on five through seven, and Matty O perhaps building one up for himself here, going back to back on six and seven. Scott will take the par, and we'll move on to one of our final holes at the front nine, hole number eight. Hole number eight is a 433-foot par three. Uh, I would say it's one of my favorite holes on the course. kind of plays in uh, dog leg shape, but really you just want to get through that mouth and hope you land somewhere good um, to get up and down for your three if you get far enough sometimes you'll have a jumper i would say and tim looking to play the backhand trying to turn it over in there then have it kind of pan out and stay in the lane that's looking really good eh, maybe it gets caught up a little bit more on that left hand side than you wanted but this looks like a pretty tough par three to be honest it is a very tough par three here today not even just the distance but the shape yeah, the shape, and then the course is a little overgrown, they would say, than it normally is, so... Fair. The lines are a little tighter. Pretty solid shot there from Matt. Well, at least give him, you know, a clean look at the basket, but still a decent ways off, and... Yeah, not surprised to see Scott go for the forehand here. It's early, though. Or is it? Did it fight through? It no, it's early. Um, he he's not even going to be able to get to the mouth from there. I'm oh sure man, he's going to have to really try and work for his par here after that one. Yeah, I feel like the concern with a forehand on this hole would probably be that it would just cut really inside on the other side of the you know gap, other side of the mouth of the gap, yeah. I should say. Here I am throwing another fairway driver. Oh. All right, then. Yeah, we had a pretty good <laughs> shot there. <laughs> well, I, I was sitting here waiting for it to come through like all the other discs had, and it looks like yours had a little bit more legs to it. Break yeah, down your own form, was, sir. It was great height. So here we are coming a little low to high, so I get that height, but as much as I can being flat, a little bit of turnover there, and just commit to it so that way it pans the entire way through the plate. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty spectacular. And as you were kind of hinting at earlier, Scott is going to have a tough time just getting to the gap, but gets close right out there on the edge now. Yeah, he'll be able to – he should be able to salvage his bogey from back here now that he's at least towards the fairway. And that gives it like a little kind of jump putt approach, yeah. and yeah, he'll get up there for his four. Some of this rough is pretty rough once you get into it, so you really got to be careful. Yeah, Matt just laying up there himself, the stress-free par, which I imagine a three is probably one of the more common scores on this hole. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it got to this round yet, so to be up here for a look is very good. Oh, right off the top, man. Look like that was Kind of a tricky putt around some trees for you. Yeah, just tried to give it the up and over. Kind of have it drop into the basket, but as you can see, a little high there. Yeah, I imagine that would have been a very rare birdie for hole eight. Had that have stuck, but at least a stress-free par, just like Tim and Matt for yourself. Yeah, so Tim and I were talking as we walked to the next hole, and he was like, I got it one time, but I've never seen anybody pass the basket, so it felt pretty good to hear that from Tim, being a two-time champ. Fair enough. As Matt will clean it up, and we'll move on here to hole number nine, our final hole of the front nine. 
With 329 feet, you see that Mando tree there you need to go left of. Um, we just passed the OB line and it's up here towards this island green. There will be two different drop zones. So a pretty tricky hole if you do go for it and you miss the island, you're able to go to the second drop zone. If you miss the Mando, you have to go to the first drop zone. As Tim will just kind of play a placement forehand, it looked like there. And with Matt picking this disc, I feel like maybe he is kind of thinking of trying to pipe one all the way to the basket. Yeah. And that might just do it. Oh, yeah. That is pristine from Hattie Hill again. That is the kind of shot he just loves to throw. And I think he knew it was good when you saw his kind of hands stay up in the air on his follow through. Mm -hmm. That's when you really know that he feels like he got it. He's very good at those straight mid range shots or like those like real slight kind of force overs where maybe he gets it like just a bit nose up or just a step up in stability and kind of floats it in. As yep. This is a great looking shot from yourself. Yep. And we're going to be up there in the green as well. Absolutely. Lucky yours had like a slight turn the whole way there through the gap and did great. It looks like, yeah, Scott kind of playing that same layup that Tim did. <laughs> yeah, so just laying up short of the OB line there to then play for their par. Kind of a walking spin put throw hybrid kind of approach there from Scott. Yeah. I'm <laughs> not sure what we call that, but <laughs> I, hey, it worked. He's inside. It, it did. Yeah, it did. I was like, what do I call this? <laughs> but it does work. Speaking of working. Oh, Scott. Look like it might scare the basket there for a second. Yeah, that was a good run from back there. I'm not sure he was going for it, but still a good shot. It looked cool. And that's what matters. Uh, Scott will find his par no problem. And speaking of no problems, it's like this will be a no problem birdie for yourself. Yeah, one would hope. It's cool to watch your card, though, uh, play to like everybody how they wanted to play that hole whereas those two players and laid up drives, and then we mm -hmm. came both in, went for it and everybody you know they played their strategy out so it's pretty cool to watch yeah indeed everyone's goals got accomplished you can kind of see the risk versus reward i mean matt just really couldn't have gotten much closer here as he just drops it in three for four here on the final holes this is a look at our front nine. Clean card so far for Tim and Matt. Matt, six down, tied for first. Tim in the top four. Of course, you're still in the mix there at two under so far. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Levi Hancock and Chandler Kramer, the ones who are tied up with Matty O so far. And at least really six down through three down keeps you in the top ten at this point. Yeah, good pack so far, tight scores, and moving on to the back nine. This is Dustin Moret with Nick Hansen, and we'll catch you for the back nine. So be sure to follow, subscribe, and we'll see you there.